all the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, our radiant King of light. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. The power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him, in faith receive from him. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is proud. the sight, our radiant King of light, be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him, in faith receive from him. Be still for the power of the Lord is
Come for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is proud. the sight, our radiant King of light, be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. To cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him, him faith receive from him. Be still for the power of the Lord is the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One. 
all gather today, many people, for uh, the fifth Sunday of the Church's year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to all of you. And um, as we gather today, um, I'm going to, uh, you will hear the readings which are of the day, but I'm going to talk about uh, a week of prayer for the sick. The reason being that uh, Friday is the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes, and uh, Pope Francis has asked that it be uh, observed in so far as we can, privately, of course, uh, if no other way, um, as a day of prayer for uh, thinking about the sick, praying for them, and supporting them if they are in our orbit of contact at all. Well, now to prepare ourselves this day to celebrate the Holy Mysteries, we call to mind our own sins and ask God's forgiveness. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ of mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us praise God together. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you will honour the Holy One, you will honour the Lord, you will honour the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year of the king Isaiah's death, I saw the Lord seated on a high throne. His train filled the sanctuary. Above him stood seraphs, each one with six wings. And they cried out to one another in this way, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundations of the threshold shook with the voice of one who has cried out. And the temple was filled with smoke. I said, what a wretched state I am in. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have looked at the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. With this, he touched my mouth and said, See now, this has touched your lips. Your sin is taken away, and your iniquity is purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will be my messenger? I answered, Here I am, send me. Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The response is, Before the angels, I will bless you, O Lord. Before the angels, I will bless you, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. Before, before the, the angels, angels, I will bless you, O Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. Before, before the, the angels, angels, I will bless you, O Lord. All kings, all earth's king, shall thank you, and they hear the words of your mouth. When they hear the words of your mouth, they shall sing of the Lord's ways. How great is the glory of the Lord. Before, Before the, the angels, angels, I will bless you, O Lord. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hand. Before, Before the, the angels, angels, I will bless you, O Lord. A second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, the gospel that you received and in which you are firmly established. Because the gospel, I will save, the gospel will save you only if you keep believing exactly what I preached to you. Believing anything else will not lead to anything. Well then, in the first place, I taught you what I had been taught myself, namely, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture. Then he was buried and that he will be raised and he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. That he appeared first to Cephas and second to the twelve. Next, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me too. It was as though I was born when no one expected it. I am the least of the apostles. In fact, since I persecuted the Church of God, I hardly deserve the name of apostle, but by God's grace, that is what I am and the grace that he gave me has not been fruitless. On the contrary, I, or rather, the grace of God that is with me, have worked harder than any of the others. But what matters is that I preach what they preach, and this is what you all believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have known everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was standing one day by the lake of Gennesaret with a crowd pressing round him, listening to the word of God. When he caught sight of two boats close to the bank, Fishermen had got out of them and were washing their nets. He left, he got into one of the boats. It was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking to Simon, he said, Put out into deep water and pay out your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, 
We worked hard all night and caught nothing. But if you say so, I will pay out the nets. And when they had done this, they netted such a huge number of fish that their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their companions in the other boat to come and help them. When these came, they filled the boats to nearly to sinking point. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and his companions were completely overcome by the catch that they had made. So were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. But Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, it is people you will catch. Then bringing their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning again, everybody, and uh, welcome to all of you. Um, as you heard there very clearly, the uh, gospel was the call of the disciples. And that's the call of all of us, to leave things and follow him. Follow him, we do not have to leave home, but follow him means in uh, the pattern of life. I began by saying that uh, the uh, request of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, was that we should kind of reflect this week on uh, the ministry to the sick. Ministry, you say, well, there's nobody sick in my family, so therefore, what do I do? Well, you do, you pray for, you think about, and you remember situations in your own family and among your friends. And you know, just straight across the road from us here, Primitive Park Hospital, loads of nursing homes and care homes of one kind and another around, all around our area. There are loads of people who are sick. We don't have to know them. We know they are there. And among you this morning, there are many people who have come from different parts of the world to look after the sick. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. We're blessed and we couldn't survive without you. So to remember those who are sick and those who are infirm and those who care for them. And even it goes down to uh, every single person in the chain in the chain of the care system. The person who opens the door, the receptionist the, from the GP's practice who answers uh, not sometimes to your liking, saying you can't see the doctor, you can't see the nurse. Well, you can in two weeks time, but I want to see her now. You can't, forget it. Come. Well, all these things, they have to be helped too because they are acting uh, in trying to kind of manage uh, life as not just they as individuals see it, as they've been told. So they're carrying out orders. They're like soldiers and they uh, kind of under the command of someone higher up. The higher up person being the practice manager probably or something like that say, this is what you say when you get a request that you don't think is urgent and tell it. But going back to the sick, Pope Francis reminds us that illness is 
beyond comprehension and certainly has no borders. We should know all about that now because of the year that we're in, the years that we're in. A pandemic is about something that is wider than we can even imagine. To that extent, that is why we should be glad to be reminded, to be kind of given a, a kick in the backside, really to hurry us up and to say, Lord, thank you for the, for the faith I have, thank you for the health I have, and let us pray for all those who are in need of care. In any way, we can help them. We can help them by prayer. We can help those who are helping them and supply. we're part of a chain, a chain that is not broken, a chain that goes on and on and on. You may be a relative of somebody who is in that group of carers. You may be a doctor, a nurse, a supplier of goods for the hospital, even those who bring the food, even those who cook the food, even those who bring the food around. They're all part of the chain. So they all need our prayers. When I say need them, it's a sign that we have understood the Christian calling to love one another. Love one another doesn't mean just uh, members of your family. Doesn't mean just the people you know. People you send Christmas cards to and get them fr Christmas cards from. It means everybody. If we had a greater sense of belonging to the human race rather than just belonging to a narrow group of people, we would have no difficulty in seeing this. And we would have greater sympathy and understanding and we would be more readily available to help and to think about in our conscious way, in our prayers and in our ways of uh, behaving and so on, uh, about the, the welfare and the good of others. Jesus was known as a healer, not a baptizer, a healer. Jesus was somebody who gave his life, his public ministry. Here he was today talking to people and they went out, they caught a large number of fish. From now on, it is people you will minister to. So the fishermen had a transition from being fishermen, which they, con they identified with and thought was their livelihood, it was, and that would be there as long as they were able, they would be fishermen. Now they are fishers of men. We are too. Fishers of people, I should say. Sorry about that. Mea culpa. Mea culpa. Mea maxima culpa. These um, translations that we have of the scriptures uh, when, when men are put in instead of people, it just drives me bonkers. And sometimes I come on the word before I kind of uh, translate it, even though privately, having read it before, I say people. I should cross it out really and say people. I'm just terrified that the bishop comes along and he sees all these men crossed out and I see the word people and, and he'd come along and he'd say, what are you doing to the, why are you, why are you messing up the scripture, the lection report? Enough of that. Now, it has no borders. It also says something to us, the pandemic does in our own time about the, uh, the attitude even that it does has uh, economically for the world. 
We know that countries who could afford the vaccines have had plenty of them. We're not going to get into the question of who wanted them and who didn't. We know that many countries could not, who could not afford vaccines were not given them. That in itself is a clear sign that we do not have a, an all-embracing notion a, among humankind that we all belong, we are interactive, we're, we need each other. People of faith, no faith. People of denomination or no denomination, people of whatever nationality, they all belong to God. We are part of that. We're just a part of it, a tiny, 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 tiny part of it. So let us pray, my dear people. As Jesus was the healer, and we've been reminded about the need to involve ourselves in praying for and supporting, and in, if in any way we can positively help. And thank you very, very much again to all those who are from uh, many countries, left their own home, left their own comfort spot, and uh, adapted to uh, a different way of life in order that many people would be healed, cared for, and looked after. Thank you to all of them. Thank you to the ambulance driver. Thank you to the police who have uh, sometimes to lead the ambulance when a person gets suddenly ill and maybe a heart attack or something like that. Thank you to all these people. It's a wide chain, it's a vast chain. Doesn't matter how many are involved, it is something that is common to all. We can all experience illness from time to time. It may be only a cough or a cold, but it is something that reminds us of our, the vulnerability of humankind and the need to care for each other. So now I invite you to please stand for the creed and thank you all for being patient and listening to me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we're going to pray for a whole wide variety of different intentions. These prayers were uh, as drawn, they're drawn up by a rota of people, so they don't always guess the information which uh, uh, I should supply if I realized there was a day like today is a day of special prayer for the sick or this week and so on. So it may not reflect it uh, accurately, but let us remember we're all part of mankind. Let us pray to God our Father for all our brothers and sisters throughout the world that as we reflect on the feast of uh, Our Lady of Lourdes on Friday as a day of prayer for all people, we will re remember them ourselves in our own private prayers too. Thank you, Kelsey. Let us pray for the leaders of Russia and Ukraine, that they are able to find a compromise to their differences. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
We pray for all those affected by war, the families that are torn apart, the lives that have been taken. May our government work continuously to try and end these wars and conflicts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in our community, especially those who need extra care and attention. May we try to reach out to them and offer them our support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all victims of domestic violence. May they find the strength and courage to find the way out of their current situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for families in whatever shape or size they may come in. We also pray for those who are alone. May they feel the comforting love of the Lord always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us always remember to be kind to ourselves as well as others. God loves us as we are. And in our dark hours, let us always remember that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick and those who are finding it difficult to see God in their lives. May they see his love through those who care for them and love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died Josephine Azopardi, Margaret Essen, Bernard Forward, Bernard Harrington, John King, and Anne Norris, and those whose anniversary is at this time. Christine Loughton, Marina Way, Agnes Maury, Dorothy Winterburn. Living without our loved ones is very hard, but let us try and take comfort that they are pain-free and in paradise with the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We put these prayers with those in our heart, as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, the Lord is, is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now and, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we make this day through the intercession of Christ, your Son, the Healer, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. We pray today, many people, for Sonny uh, Lachlan, uh, who is deceased at the request of Fiona Malloy, and for Alvaro Freitas Pereira, uh, whose anniversary occurs at this time, at the request of Madalena. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Who humbles himself to share? in our humanity. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you all. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to live through the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us the remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Jesus Christ. Through him, the hosts of angels adore you and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices too, we pray, join with theirs, as in one chorus we exult and praise as we acclaim together. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pay upon the offerings of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. With the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph her spouse, the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servants, Francis our Pope, Richard our Bishop, and the entire people, your son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family who have gathered before you this day. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Sonny Lachlan and Alvaro Freitas Puera, both of whom are dead, who have gone to their eternal reward. You have called them from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in the glory of his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh all those who have died, transform our lowly bodies into the pattern of his gloriously risen body. And for all our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. When you will, when you will wipe away all tears from our eyes, for seeing you are God as you are, we shall become like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. I invite you now, my dear people, to stand, please, and the words that Jesus gave us, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Now, if I could remind you again, my dear people, that um, we will be coming up from the outside aisles there. And the people on the outside will be first. They will come over and they will be first. They will come over. And the Eucharistic ministers will stand in the corner of the uh, step there and the corner of the step here. So that it kind of creates a fan uh, kind of pattern so that people can move around without having to bump into each other and so on. So you come up and you fan out like that. And, um, and then you return to your place. Okay, thank you.
I invite you to stand and pray, please. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who will, who have willed that we be partakers in the bread and one cup, grant, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, going back to the uh, topic of the week um, and the day, uh, praying for the sick and those who care for them, uh, uh, the question was asked, um, uh, why do we need to? And uh, the answer that Jesus gave on chapter 25 of Matthew uh, was uh, in so far as you did this to one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it also to me. So he made a direct connection between the uh, doing good to one person, your neighbor, a friend, uh, and uh, himself. So let us be in no doubt that it is well founded and the call is good. Uh, there's a monthly paper, by the way. Um, it just comes once a month. Uh, you've already seen one edition of it. The second edition of it is in the porch or on the passageway out on the left-hand side there. Uh, hopefully there will be enough for all. Uh, that's the hope anyway. And Friday is the feast of Our Lady uh, of Lourdes and a special day of prayer for the sick. But let us not confine it to a day. Let us remember it every day of our lives, if we can. I wish you all well, and I hope, please God, everything goes well for you. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you now, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is now ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another too. Thank you all very much indeed. I wish you a very good week. And thank you to Brookie and Chris this morning and to all who helped. Thank you to Elizabeth who read and uh, our Eucharistic ministers. Broken and shared with us, your 
your body broken and shared with us the gift of your great love. Our lives are in your